Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Masks Off. I'm Kim. And I'm Tia. And we're so glad to be here with you today. Once again, we've chosen a different day, different time to record. It just is what it is. We're showing up in the moment mm-hmm. and in the, um, flow. <laughs> in the flow, exactly. And we talk about that a lot in our episodes. So, um, and today we're going to talk about, um, I don't know, overcoming limiting beliefs, I suppose it mm-hmm. is. And just the idea that it is never, ever, ever too late to do something new, something different. Mm-hmm. And, um, but before we jump in, let me start with our quote as we normally do. So today's quote is, who told you it was too late? And more importantly, why did you choose to believe them? Rochelle E. Goodrich. And part of the inspiration for this podcast is that I was doing my Peloton this morning and I do and listen to Robin Artzone. Um, she's one of the Peloton instructors and I do her classes and she's so freaking inspiring. She's so inspiring. And so during the bike ride, she was talking about like, it's never too late to have a new career. It's never too late to fall in love. It's never too late to, you know, get in shape or choose to run a marathon and Partly she was saying this because she's running the Boston, not Boston, I'm sorry, New York City Marathon tomorrow, or we're pre-recording this. So it's, you know, soon (laughs) she's going to be doing the New York City, Boston, New York City Marathon. And it is her 27th marathon. Oh my goodness. She never started running until she was like in her twenties. She has done nine of them in New York city. And she just had a baby eight months ago. And she even said during the ride, if you told me nine months ago that I would be running a marathon this quickly, she said, I would have told you, you were crazy. And that just plays and shows and underscores what our mind does. Exactly. And, you know, I do that a lot in the Peloton rides, like, oh, I can't do this. I can't keep up, you know, whatever. And she also, um, I don't know for how long, if it's been her whole life or not, but she also has diabetes. She's diabetic as well. So she has health conditions and challenges, and yet she runs all the time. Obviously she does these Peloton classes. She's in amazing shape. And I noticed when she was saying like that, that we Mm -hmm. can do anything. It's never too late. I heard this little tiny quiet voice saying, (laughs) yeah, but you know what? I got an autoimmune disease, you know, like, yeah, "Yeah, but you know what? I have these physical challenges. And then I'm like, well, so does she. Mm -hmm. So like, am I holding myself back some by my thoughts? Right. So, Right. right. Yeah. And I've really seen the, that thought, that little nudge. Yeah. The yeah. message really needs to be, yes, I can. Mm-hmm. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I can. The thing is, sometimes I think that I, and I know this about myself when it comes to exercise, sometimes I get a little bit lazy and I don't do the cardio every day, or I don't go and push myself that hard. So I become probably more deconditioned then it actually is the autoimmune disease. Do you know what I mean? So I, I probably could, yes, I can. I probably could. And, and not that I have a de- desire to do a, you know, a full marathon. I don't, mm-hmm. but I could be a little bit more. I probably could be more at the top of my game physically. If I push myself. Interesting. Okay. So I'm going to tell you what was coming up for me. Cause I didn't, know okay. this, but So a little devil's advocate aspect. So I think yes. And so here we're in this both and which we talk about a lot. Yes. So yes, we can hold ourselves back and sometimes we can't do it all either. So sometimes like that little autoimmune nudge that you had, or I, you know, I'm thinking of other people I know who have stuff. They can't, 
literally like yes. you can do enough, but you're not going to be able to run a marathon because right. it could actually do detriment and harm yes. to you. So being mindful of also, yes, you can. And that doesn't mean you push yourself past a point you shouldn't Yes, either. So bringing in that both and yes, you can't, and you need to listen to your body and you need to be respectful. So don't also let someone say you can do it. You can do it. Yes. And you override your inner voice, your actual inner voice, not the critical inner voice of going, I would love to. And I also know that that could set me back or yes. push me past the edge and make whatever condition I have worse. Yeah. So, and we, so there's the balance and yeah. the pendulum swing, because I mean, I'm sure you've known people who have pushed themselves too hard. You know, we're talking physical exercise at this point. Um, and it actually does cause harm. Like I can't, I, I mean, I notice myself, I'm not a runner. I can't run. I hate yes. running. Could I force myself to do it? Sure. I could but I don't want to like my inner right. voice is like, don't you're structurally not built for it. Every time you've tried running, you get shin splints that are horrible. It's just the way my angles of my knees and my hips and my ankles are. So that's not saying I can't from a mental state. It's a, Hey, it's not healthy for me and that's okay. Yeah. You know, so finding yeah. that balance of yes, I can, and also not just in regards to exercise, you know, you, it's never too late to become a conscious parent It's never too late to start to connect to your authentic self. It's never too late, even though we're often told it's too late. So finding what's right for each individual is so important, but noticing right. those thoughts of, Hey, you can't do this. What are you thinking? Versus let me explore this. Maybe I can. What does it look like for me? Yeah. I a hundred percent agree. And I think that part of being able to do that is really, um, developing a really good relationship with your inner self so that you can still, it's that intuition. It's that gut feeling. It's that what Gabor Mate says that we, when we get disconnected from that gut feeling or listening to our inner voice is the ultimate trauma when we no longer listen to that voice. And I know what you said, because when I had COVID and then I was trying to get back into exercise, right. like I was listening to my body because I could feel like my heart wasn't feeling good. I felt, you know, I didn't feel great yet. And I knew I had to go slow and work my way back up. So I was really listening to my body at that point. Yeah. And there were times where my, my ego, my critical I self remember. was coming in. I shared this yep. in an episode saying, come on, Kim, you know, you could do better. You could do more. Remember where mm -hmm. you were just like a few months ago, exactly. you were blah, blah, blah. So, and I was noticing the two, the dialogues going on and, you know, I did listen to my body and I did go slowly until I got back there. And, and now, you know, um, I agree with you about making that choice, that discernment, because I used to do boot camp all the time, very high intense classes. And when COVID hit and the gyms closed and I started to work out at home on my own, I continue to stay with that workout. And I don't go back to the gym because my body was in pain a lot right. from going and doing that you know, for example, um, and I know many, many a women can do and will do tons of push-ups, but you know, we did all kinds of stuff that again, I'm going to watch what I'm saying, but we did stuff that men were doing push-ups and all this high, high intense kind of stuff. And for me personally, my body was just in pain. Yeah. My exactly. body was in pain a lot from it. And now I have found a place where I do work out and I'm not in pain, you know, but yes, if I wanted to do a half marathon, cause I did one like 10 years ago, if I wanted to do a half marathon, yes, I could do it again. So, you know, it really right. exactly. is about watching it's discernment and it's watching that inner dialogue. Yeah. And I think it's so important too, to remember like the, yes, you can message, which is valuable, but like anything, yeah. there's two sides to every coin, right? So yes, you can. So it can be used as a shaming tool. Yes. Or it can be used as an empowerment tool. 
And so that's that discernment, you know, because how many times have people said, yes, you can do it, you can do it. And your inner part is screaming, no, no, no. And you do it anyway. Yes. It hurts, you know, physical activity, or you do something with a relationship that you regret, or, you know, you make a choice that wasn't in alignment with you. And now you have to live with those consequences, knowing you were not listening to that inner voice Yes. versus yes, you can. I believe in you. I'm going to tap into what's true for me and continue making those choices. So now as we're talking with this, yes, you can being mindful, you're using it in alignment with yourself. So when I hear, yes, you can now, what I'm hearing is first and foremost, the yes, you can has to start with you. And it comes back to what we talk about all the time. What is coming up within you with that? Yes, you can. Where is your yes? Where is what's stopping you from saying your yes? Yeah. And and taking the next action step. So it's not the external, it's not the exercise. It's not this thing. What it is, is what am I holding? What am I holding myself back from? Not what society is telling me I'm holding myself back from, you know? So for your example, it sounds like with the Peloton woman, she knew she could do it. And she wasn't going to let society say, just because you had a baby eight months ago, you can't do this. You need to rest. She knew within herself, she could do this where another person, it may be too much. And so there's no right path. And that's the beauty of, you know, remembering that we're whole and we're complete as we are, but we have to listen and tap in to our authentic, our connection, our choices for us. Okay. So I'm going to throw a question out there and kind of explore and deconstruct this a little bit. Okay. So going along with the quote, it says, who told you it was too late Mm -hmm. or, and more importantly, why did you choose to believe them? So basically what I'm thinking about is let's say, and it's not about too late. It's just about someone, any person just struggling with a part of themselves. Let's say someone is stuck in fear and that person is well aware that he or she is stuck in fear and that fear is holding him back from say doing something or showing up in a way at a job that he's not, because there's a fear of maybe it's imposter syndrome, maybe something, there's a limiting belief. Yes. And it came from somewhere, most likely, you know, in childhood, right. Right. Someone said, you're not good enough, or you can't do this kind of thing. And you're not smart enough. Let's say that. So now this person in his or her job isn't showing up in the way that he wants to. So, and then, so then someone else comes along and says, but yes, you can just do this. Just don't, don't let the fear keep you Mm -hmm. from what you want to do. Yeah. What do you say in that situation? Should the, not should, because there's that word should is a shitty word, (laughs) but you know, the person who is struggling And feeling like, no, I can't do A, B, and C. And it's clear from the person on the outside. The only reason why you can't is because you're telling yourself that Mm -hmm. you can't do this. Mm -hmm. And the person says, yeah, but I know, but I can't, I can't get past the fear. I can't move. I'm stuck. What do you do then? Does that person just need to stay stuck in that place until he or she is ready? If ever because we see this all the time. People right. stay stuck right. and think that they can't, they stay in the victim mode because it's safe. But are they truly stuck though? Like, are they really, really stuck? Or do you just say, pull yourself out of there? You can do it. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I mean, this could be a whole nother episode in itself. Cause it's interesting how this question is bringing up stuff we talked about before we hit record. Absolutely. Right. Cause you know, we were considering talking about something else. So it brings up someone else is saying you should, or you're stuck. Yep. So that's their perspective, their point of view, and they're on the outside and there is truth, right? Because I work with people. I'm like, I can see, you know, when I work with them, but they're choosing to come to me they're choosing, they're ready for a change. So I think it's more, we can plant the seeds for people that, Hey, I, you are, you're more than what you are. You think you are. Mm. 
So we can plant the seeds. We cannot change them, right? Because we can only change ourselves. And we, you know, what we talked about earlier, judgment, yep. discernment, observation. Yeah. But it's up to that person to start to deconstruct and understand, oh, I do have a limiting belief because there's limiting beliefs in people around us all the time within yeah. us, our blind spots. You know, I have limiting beliefs I'm not even aware of. Me too. In, until I become aware of them, whether it's you pointing something out or someone else, but I'm open to that. So I think, yes, they're stuck. Someone may be stuck, but maybe they just want to be stuck their whole life because that's, they don't have the energy to deconstruct it. And who are we to say they need to push past it? Because then there could be a re-traumatization if it's not coming from them. So it's the, yes, you can, but if they're not ready to start to overlook and overcome and deconstruct and understand and then reconnect with their yeah. actual true self. So is it harmful then to encourage and tell someone who is struggling and stuck that yes, you can, is I, that, does that make it worse for the person? Because they may think, well, so-and-so, you know, is telling me I'm, I'm so worthy and I'm good and I, I can do this, but I feel like I can't. So, and then is it just reinforcing? Is it just reinforcing? Oh, they're judging me. They don't understand me. I'm not seen and heard when the person's thought is potentially true, but then it comes back to that person who's sharing that. Right. So like what we were talking, it's like, okay, I can plant the seed and then I have to let it go. Mm. Yeah. So what is the intention of the person giving that feedback? Because I know personally, there's been times I've been like, yeah, but you're so this or that, or don't you see, or, you know, here's another angle and they're just not open to that. And so I, if I push too much, I'm just going to get resistance back. If there's opening, isn't there versus, Hey, can I provide you some, something to think about? Are you interested in this? And if they say no, I have to respect that. If they say, yeah, sure. I'm, what are you saying? And then they're open to receiving. So I think the person has to be open to receiving the message first and foremost, because otherwise it's just more words from another person that tells them, well, I'm just, see, look, I'm a failure. They think I can do it and I can't. So something's wrong with me. So that's interesting. So how does that tie into our episode then of yes, you can? I think we can say yes, you can without expectations. Mm. If we're saying it to another. So when I hear yes, yes, you can, like the message you got this morning when you were yes. on the Peloton, you were ready to receive it. Yes. So obviously she, you know, I don't know how many people are, were in that class this morning, if it was live or recorded, but whoever yeah, it was recorded, probably I, like 50,000. Yeah. So she said it to 50,000, but she's not having mm -hmm. an interactive conversation with each individual right. person. She's planting a seed because how can she have attachment to the outcome to 50,000 people? You can't, you know, but let's say she touches 25 people who heard it like you as a receiving like, Oh, yeah, I am. There's this. Oh, and then this thing is holding me back. And is it, should it be holding me back? Should that's not the right word. Right. But, or is it something I can explore and maybe I can expand a little bit more. Mm. So it's really, we can say that message, but then it lands on that person. But if it's those one-on-one -on -one conversations, I think it's, we need to be aware and attuned to the other person are they ready to receive this message because if they receive it in a negative light it just continues their journey of shoving pushing themselves down and staying small yeah you, you know what i'm saying i feel like yeah I'm i agree and also a little bit but no i totally agree and we can also just use it for ourselves right even yes. though robin said it to fifty thousand people but i can just take the mantra of yes, I can and use it internally when I need to, when I catch right. my own, you know, negative inner dialogue and that, and that's what it's about, right? It's, exactly. it's when you he have that inner dialogue of going on, you know, again, I'll, I'll relate it back to my food because I've done the wild fit. Right. And, um, traveling has always been a trigger for me to go slip back into eating unhealthy food. 
And I was just away again for another five days. I've been doing a lot of traveling. And one night we were sitting at the dinner table and my husband and my son ordered a pizza. And all of a sudden, like, and I hadn't thought about pizza in a long time. All of a sudden the smell of that pizza was like, ah, it smelled so freaking good. Like I wanted some of the pizza, but there was this like inner resolve of no, yes, I can, I can sit Mm -hmm. here and I can, you know, eat my food and I can say no to the pizza. I can say yes to the pizza. If I want to, I can say yes to it. But when I thought about it, I'm like, do I really want that dairy in my stomach? Like this was the conversation, the inner dialogue first. It was like, Oh my God, that old dialogue of Mm -hmm. being afraid, like it's going to have power over me. And then I kind of sat with that and I challenged that. I'm like, no, it's, it's food. Now, do I want it? Hmm. Smells really good. Do I want my stomach to be upset from the dairy Mm -hmm. or the gluten? And then I made a conscious choice of, no, I really don't want to feel crappy from eating it. I rather feel good and I'll have my fish and I'll have my vegetables Mm -hmm. and made that choice. But it was interesting to watch how it came up Mm -hmm. and there was just kind of like, yeah, I can do this. Yes, I can. So See? it's different when not it different came from you. It, it came from me from within. Cause that's the only way it can happen anyway. Right. Otherwise we're doing it for someone else. Yeah. And that is not the way we live in our truth. Mm, that, and that's so interesting. Cause you know, I say it all the time with my kids, I'm always trying to fix and rescue. So I'm always trying to tell them, you know, and so when you know, and even that as a mom or a parent, or even if it's like, you're doing it with a friend, you mm-hmm. might think that you're trying to be really helpful by offering all this encouragement and telling them, yes, you can. And if I'm going to be hundred percent honest yeah. right now, and I'm going to call myself out again, it comes back to that anxiety that I feel when my kids are in struggle, right. You know, and I want to fix. So if I just give them that. Oh yeah. Rah, rah. Yes. You're mm-hmm. amazing. Yes, you can. Yes. It's about them some, but there's a layer of it. It's about me, right? Always. It is about me <laughs> wanting to feel more comfortable. So I'm trying to fix and make them feel good and be good so mm-hmm. that I can feel good. Right. Going back to the last episode of codependence and totally. that enmeshment. Totally. I mean, how freaking hard is that to like for, or how many people don't want to see that truth? and own that truth. Right. It's taken a lot of work. And I know you can, Oh yeah. For yourself, you can recognize it too and say, Completely. I see the truth in my behavior right here. Right. Right. Exactly. And does that mean we don't give words of encouragement? Absolutely no, not. I'm not but saying we can that. Give them and then release. Yes. I, then you have no to be aware else. of where you're coming from when you're giving the words. And that's why I said, it is an and for me. Like, yes, I want to encourage my kids. Of course, you know, I want to encourage them, but I'm also aware that there's a layer of that. That is about me. Totally. So we notice that. And then we can, you know, we talked about this before we hit record, we can vacillate between both. Yes. You know, so I can come from that place of worry and anxiety within me or discomfort within me and share those words of wisdom or hey, have you looked at this perspective or whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever we want to sugarcoat it. And I can say it from that place, but then I can drop into my heart and realize, oh, I said that. Okay. But now I need to release. It's not, it's not my journey. It's their journey. Right. You know, where if I keep staying with it, then I'm stuck in my discomfort and my need to fix and change and pave a path of least resistance for them. Yeah. But most of the time when I come from that place, then I remember drop into your heart, okay, release yeah. the expectation, release the need for control. You said the words of encouragement or a perspective difference option way to look at it. Yep. And then it's up to them. I totally agree. And just one more little example, just to illustrate what you just said is that after I finished the Peloton, My husband did a Peloton ride and he listened to a different instructor. And then he, he actually, um, sent to my daughter and, and he did just what you said. He just Mm -hmm. gave the encouragement in a text because she's in Boston and then just let it go. And he wasn't attached to whether Mm -hmm. she does it or doesn't do it. So he just said something like what the instructor said, Alex T said, 
don't go with the flow, be the flow. And he was kind of just quoting Jay-Z in a text, let it go. And mm-hmm. that's it, you know, yeah. and where it lands, it lands with, with my daughter. If it help. And she was like, Oh, love it. Thanks for that dad. Oh, and that's it. You know, no attachment. That's the key. No attachment to what she or anyone else does with what you give them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So anyway, that was a yes, you can <laughs> episode for today. There was yes. actually a lot of um, wisdom layers in that episode. Lots of layers. Definitely. And lots more ways we can dive in deep. We can always dive in deeper, right? We always, yes, we always want to. So, oh, all right. So yes, we can yes, in our own can. way with our own truth. Yes. So for just today, this week, take a little look at your life and see maybe one area where you can say, yes, I can and inspire and motivate yourself a little bit. Mm, love it. Thanks yeah. for listening, everyone. Thanks, everyone. We appreciate your support. And if you did like this episode, we would love a thumbs up. Or if you haven't subscribed, you can also subscribe too. We appreciate it. Take care. Bye.